You're listening to the Not Safe for Work History Podcast. History for the depraved. Hey, this is Joe and that's Jason. This is the Not Safe for Work History Podcast. Uh, and this is episode five where we talk about uh, dolphins. All about dolphins, what they eat, where they live. Yep. We were actually the, changing the podcast to the, um, the uh, <laughs> not. You should have worked this out beforehand. Uh, I should have. <laughs> uh, <laughs> no, we're, we're actually going to talk about an experiment that took place in the 1960s, bringing it up a little bit from the, uh, Previous episodes, uh, we can't just stay in the Roman Empire forever. We gotta, we gotta bring it up to the yeah. modern era. Yeah, Sometimes. I, I guess. <laughs> I wanted to do an episode on uh, Jessica Hahn and the Baker scandal and all that, but I got nixed on that. So maybe someday. Yeah, that that was like what the late eighties. I can't remember. I know we talked about I don't know. It, it was dumb, whatever <laughs> whatever the topic was. Oh, uh, well, you know, Jessica Hahn. Yeah. Then we could post her Playboy pictures. Oh, no, no. Like I remember now. It was just the, yeah. Just, yeah. <laughs> someday. Someday not, we'll get to that. Not worth it. No, where were we? I don't know. Okay. Some of uh, no. dolphins. Yeah. Some. In the 1960s, uh, an experiment took place involving dolphins. And have you, before we did the research for this episode, had had you ever heard of Dr. John C. Lilly before? No, I, I, I didn't. And I was really surprised that he was friends with, uh, <laughs> random Jeff, Jeff Bridges. Jeff Bridges. Appearance. Yeah. Yeah. Well, no, well, Dr. John C. Lilly, I was familiar with him before this, uh, cause back when I was in high school years and years ago, when movies like. Oliver Stone's The Doors and Dazed and Confused and shit like that were out. There was a big resurgence of like hippie type people. Right. And I was one of them. Yeah. The tie-dye t-shirts and, you know, <laughs> all that shit. Uh, and I was familiar with it because he was in the same groups as like Timothy Leary. You've heard of Timothy Leary oh, before. Yeah. yeah. Of course. We and uh, talked about him in this podcast. Have we? Yeah. When? The I'm last episode. Did we? Yeah, when we were talking about Vietnam. Or no, it was a swear word episode. It was when we were talking about fuck. Oh, okay. You don't even remember. I'll, t- I'll take your, I don't know. As Two damn soon episodes as, ago. As soon as, as soon as we're done recording these, I completely forget everything <laughs> to do with the, uh, with the episode. So, yeah. but uh, yeah, he was, he was part of that whole, uh, Lending legitimacy to um, experimentation with LSD until it, you know, fucked up their brains and they went all sideways. Yeah. And turned into hippies themselves. Yeah. Um, it's funny to watch his progression because he goes from being like this straight laced crew cut shirt and tie guy to uh, like a 50 scientist. <laughs> yeah. To just complete, you know, blown out hippie yeah. you know yeah we watched um documentary on this what was it called the woman who loved dolphins. the woman who talked to dolphins i think is what it was called something like bbc that. documentary yeah. or is the woman who loved dolphins I is think. it i thought yeah. it was talked to uh, maybe. either way yeah well, do a search for both you'll find it i'm sure <laughs> yeah um and this the the funniest part of that whole film uh hour long documentary uh it's near the end and he's they have this lily guy um talking like in an interview and he's full on wearing like a fucking raccoon skin uh hat <laughs> and he's got like a red jumpsuit on and like he's he has like a leather glove on one hand it was insane. And his like ears are pierced and shit too. Yeah, was, didn't he have a, like a mullet? Yeah, he, yeah. Oh, it was it was just 
all over the place, but the was... raccoon skin hat just topped it off. It was so. I think great. I missed that. I don't think I noticed that. You should, you go back and watch it because it and is it's, funny. It's funny too because the show, st- the this uh, documentary starts out with him as the stereotypical '50s scientist too. Yeah, lab coat, necktie, crew cut, glasses. They always wear glasses. Yeah, <clears throat> but it's it's quite a transformation. He. Uh, well, wow, that quite a journey that he took, really. Yeah, and it was it was. Uh, I mean, we'll get to it, but it was his uh, sudden fascination with LSD that kind of uh, led to some sad stuff in this story we're talking about today. We can't we can't all be happy, sunshine and roses, and on the Nate Not Safe Work History podcast. Yeah, this. So. I mean, there's a lot of sensationalism with this story, and a lot of uh, just flat out fake shit that happened or, or yeah. things that that were said to have happened but and i like think there's a lot of overblown i think there's a lot of uh one thing that wasn't touched upon on the documentary is this uh the the people that were in this uh this villa and we should get to introducing what's going on here but the people that were working on this project i don't think necessarily got along very well and we'll we'll kind of explore that a little bit, yeah, uh, when we get to the point or get to that point. But uh, I think there was a lot of tension amongst the uh, researchers. Yeah, well, in, I think in the house. I think what it was, it was a group who were scientifically trained and had a decent and a what well, they were scientifically trained and they had a a plan, a Mm. plan of action with these dolphins. And then there were mainly two other people who were kind of like, oh, we can just teach these guys English and we can, (laughs) which is the dumbest idea. Yeah, well, you got to learn how, uh, we'll get to the, we're getting way ahead of ourselves now, but, (laughs) but we're, we're going to start this, uh, this journey uh, in 1961 where we have Dr. John C. Lilly still clean cut, lab coat, necktie, glasses, a uh, famous neuroscientist uh, at the time. He, uh, he began construction of a research laboratory in the Caribbean Sea uh, on the island of St. Thomas called the Dolphinarium. And the, the goal of the uh, Dolphinarium was, it was actually kind of a test uh, facility for a bigger experiment um, funded by NASA and I think the U.S. Navy as well. But the the ultimate goal of this program was to try to learn how one would communicate with extraterrestrials. Because, uh, and I, I mean, that sounds kind of crazy now. Uh, I don't but know. I, I I can't picture... NASA or any other U.S. organization funding ex- an experiment to try to talk to aliens. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> we only have the SETI Institute. Well, I know, but they're are they really? They're not as funded as they used to be. Um, they're they're pretty funded, <laughs> but aren't uh, isn't SETI now more focused on just finding extraterrestrial well, it, life? Or yeah, but I mean they. Yeah. I mean that's well, the, the whole purpose. Though, I mean, it? and that's that's okay because you know the more it's very likely that there's alien life out there somewhere, right? Uh, but but I, I mean, don't know. They're the they're the people that stick the telescopes. I mean, they're probably not telescopes, but obviously, <laughs> whatever they are, <laughs> yeah. Radio. They they listen for shit out in space. Yeah. They're the well, ones I mean, that the, the, the picked up that wow signal, right? Yeah. Yeah. Right. Okay. Well, actually, SETI, I think, was involved in this uh, this research as well. They were yeah, they the were. Funders. Yeah. Well, they're, they're through, they're funded through NASA. Through right? NASA, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Because at the time, I mean, we were funding NASA like a motherfucker. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the, the Cold War space race, all that kind of fun stuff. Yeah. And I think uh, at the time, 1961, uh, 50s, there's still the idea that there might be little green men on, the, on Mars or something like that. You know, we thought that at the time, we thought that the 
idea of extraterrestrial life was much closer than we do now. I think that's the main bit. Right. They thought, you know, Marvin the Martian was <laughs> yeah, just a rock away. But anyway, they, they built this. I doubt uh, that's the case, but. <laughs> <laughs> they, they built this, uh, this, it was a villa. They called the Dolphinarium on the uh, island of St. Thomas. And it was uh, right on the coast. And they had uh, attached to this, this house, this, this villa, was a pool that was actually filled by the sea. And it was cleaned by the sea when the tide would, would go out and stuff like that. It's kind of a neat setup. I, I mean, you saw the documentary too. Yeah. Uh, what they had built there. It was pretty and, cool. And the goal of this particular research at the Dolphinarium was to learn to communicate with dolphins, or at the very least, figure out how dolphins communicated with each other. Right. Um, which it, I think en- ended up being like one of the main goals for the serious type scientists there. Yeah, that w- I think that was the main. Um, that was the main experiment for. Well, I guess it wasn't the the main obvious. Obvers- that was the main observation for like the group of legitimate scientists. Yeah, yeah, like the means of communication of dolphins. Right. Which makes sense when you are observing a an animal that clearly isn't as smart as you. Um it it would make sense that you learn their language and not yeah. vice versa. Yeah. Which I like throughout the whole thing I, I was thinking like, well this is just stupid. <laughs> we'll get there. Yeah, we'll get there. Uh, it held three bottlenose dolphins, uh, two females, Sissy and Pamela, and one younger male named Peter. And they were actually all, uh, they had all been in the film Flipper. I don't know if anybody's ever seen the film Flipper out there before. Yeah, but... that's an old one. It, he was faster than lightning. <laughs> and I, I don't think I ever saw the movie. But I know I saw the oh, TV yeah, show. Oh yeah, the TV show for sure. It was on uh, in Canada. We had YTV, which was youth television, and that was one of the shows they had on syndication. Yeah, I, me- I remember watching it as a kid, like at on um, Nick at Night or something. So they had these three dolphins, uh, which they were going to use to observe communication and and you know conduct the research and. Uh, Dr. Lilly recruited a noted anthropologist by the name of Gregory Bateson. Um, and he, Bateson had actually spent a lot of his time researching um, native languages and such, you know, like uh, traveling to different remote villages and tribes and observing the way they communicated and such. Him and his wife was, his wife was heavily involved in the research as well. Yeah. And he kind of had become interested in studying the way animals communicated, which is how he ended up on this uh, project. And I think, I think had he gotten a lot of the focus of this research rather than the person we'll be talking about in a moment, it might have gone a little bit better, I think. Right. Well, I think that was the original experiment, right? Or yeah. the original, the the whole original, I keep saying experiment, but his part yeah, wasn't yeah. necessarily an experiment. Yeah. Um, it was more that, of a that was, observation. Oh, yeah, yeah, that was the majority of the research was to study the dolphins and their language and how they communicate with each other. Yeah. But then Lily just got really into the idea of fucking teaching dolphins how to speak english (laughs) you really just don't like that idea at all no it's a stupid (laughs) idea (laughs) it is it is and the person they got to conduct this research too uh who we're getting to (laughs) (laughs) well okay well first off think of the most unqualified person to do this experiment and yeah that's, there you go. And I feel so bad because she seems like a, a nice lady. You know what I mean? Like yeah. she just, she, she was well-meaning, but uh, we might as well introduce her now. But uh, they finished, uh, the completed construction of the Dolphinarium in 1963, I believe, and started their research. Uh, and in early 1964, a woman by the name of 
Margaret Howe Lovett arrived at the doorstep of the Dolphinarium. Uh, Margaret was a 22-year-old college dropout who was in St. Thomas looking for adventure, basically. Uh, just We're still in the early 60s, so we don't have that whole hippie movement going on yet. But uh, I mean, yeah, she was just uh, traveling around yeah, the, looking for stuff to do. <laughs> the documentary said that she literally just walked up to the place and said, I see you have dolphins here. Can do you like do you mind if I work for you? Yeah. There's like no experience like no experience like you know nothing about animals. Well, you know what I think part of the big thing is and this was completely avoided in the whole documentary and all the articles I read about this and everything is she was an attractive woman. Right. Oh yeah. I mean she was yeah, 22. She was 22, attractive woman. All these guys in their middle age, like, you know, Definitely. They were of course. in their 40s, yeah. 50s. I think that's what got her in the door. Yeah, I mean, what was it uh, Was it Lily who gave her the job? Uh, no, actually, it was uh, Gregory uh, Bateson. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> it was because Lily wasn't, he, he didn't stay at the Dolphinarium all that much. Yeah, he, he was, was occupied with securing funding and stuff right. like that and later on dropping acid. <laughs> but. <laughs> <laughs> that's coming that's not we're not quite there yet but no but it was um bateson who uh who gave her the job and he said I, we can't afford to pay you yeah it's but anytime you want to come here and, and work what feel he, free. he told her just to look at these dolphins and write down what they do yeah it, that's like the biggest scam. <laughs> that's yeah once you write down yeah. and 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 then you know she would give him whatever she he wrote down and then for some reason he was impressed by by whatever she wrote down so yeah. it was totally like yeah you can swim around here in your bikini all day like i don't care <laughs> oh she had one of those like skid tight wetsuit things on in the pictures i saw so well yeah but they would they would also swim with the dolphins in their free time and they'd just be in yeah. their bathing suits yeah oh no they loved it but of course Gregory Bateson's wife was with them there too at the Dolphinarium. Well, she was involved in the, uh, and see that's where I think some of the, uh, you know, the tension, the tension came between from. the two. Groups. Yeah, because yeah. because there was we have Margaret now uh, showing up at the Dolphinarium to do work, and <laughs> and we've got Gregory Bateson and his wife. I can't remember his wife's name. I should have written it down, but um, doing their research, and I'm sure everything was fine and dandy at first, but uh, right. You know, it's uh, when Margaret started to get a bigger role in the research, I think, is when things started happening. But uh, it was uh, soon after she started working there for free, uh, she was put in charge. Or no, she wasn't put in charge, sorry. She was, uh, she was given the task of aiding in the mimicry research the lab was carrying out. So they were basically trying to get dolphins to mimic human speech which is the thing that has which you uh which is a circus <laughs> trick it's just a trick yeah well it is yeah, yeah there's no there's, there's no legitimacy there's no, behind it and i i don't know if it was i think that was orig, that was lily's idea wasn't it yeah dr lily yeah. is the one that was pushing towards teaching dolphins to mimic human speech yeah. and i think gregory bateson was against that from the get-go. Oh, Because what he was doing, he, okay, Because so, what he was doing was actual science. Yeah. Yeah, he was observing the dolphins on a daily basis and just trying to see... Try to understand you know, them. Yeah. Rather than... Yeah, because the problem with teaching a dolphin English is there's you don't know if the comprehension is there. Right. Well, I, it's like yeah, a parrot. Exactly. It's you know exactly. You you can tell a parrot. Actually, I'm pretty sure they give them. They say this as an example. Your your parrot can say "Polly want a cracker" and you give it a cracker, but it doesn't understand what "Polly want a cracker" means. It's just yeah. mimicking you. This dolphin exactly. couldn't ask for a ball. It could just repeat, kind of repeat the word "ball." <laughs> kind of, kind of being in the. Uh... Opera. Yeah, and I'll, I'll play some examples for, too. Yeah, way open for interpretation. Yeah, after uh, Lovett would 
say ball. And she would have to say these words with an inflection so their snorkel or their the snorkel. Blow <laughs> <laughs> their blowhole so they could mimic the sound with their blowhole. So it's like not only are you not teaching th- these uh, animals English, you are bastardizing English so it so to make it easier for these animals to kind of pronounce a word. Yeah, if you the, the good examples that that they had of Peter uh well, I should well we'll get there yeah. but uh of the dolphins speaking, if you played it with no context, it would sound it wouldn't sound like anything. <laughs> you wouldn't you would just like, oh, that's just a dolphin. <laughs> dolphin making, making fucking noises. noises. Yeah. But uh but that's um Margaret uh when she was uh, tasked with aiding in this mimicry research, she decided to focus her attention on Peter uh, because Peter had not had any mimicry training yet, so he's kind of like a clean slate. Yeah. Whereas the other two females had. Uh, so, yeah, she focused on Peter, the one male dolphin, and that will play an important role uh, in a moment. A little more about Peter, I guess, we should, we should mention. Uh, he was a young male. Uh, The youngest, I think, of the three. Yeah. And he was reaching sexual maturity, I guess you could say. And if you know anything about dolphins at all, it's that they're one of the few mammals, I think only mammals, besides primates, that actually engage in sex for fun. I heard that. Yeah, their sex drive is similar to humans. Yeah, they're very aggressive. (laughs) <laughs> they are very aggressive. Uh, so <laughs> reminds me of a, the uh, King of the Hill episode where Hank gets oh, like that's right too. He's swimming with the dolphin. It gets horny. <laughs> tries to have <laughs> sex with them. Yeah, <laughs> that's a, that's a bold episode, really. Yeah, it really if, is. Uh, for Fox, King of the Hill was on Fox, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. Wow. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> you well. I get. I, I say this because you you think of a, a pubescent teenage boy. You know that's basically what uh, this dolphin right. was rubbing yeah. on things and <laughs> just being angry like, and <laughs> yeah. Well, well, they didn't mention anything like that. Well, I guess no. She just did, his well. general aggressiveness towards all of yeah. that. Like there, there were times where. In the documentary, they mentioned how she had sustained like minor injuries from him bruising and stuff like that. Yeah, on her legs and things. Yeah, but uh, we're again we're jumping ahead a little bit. Sorry, but because it was after she had been working with Peter for a little bit. I don't think he was there yet. I think he was just about to go through dolphin puberty. I guess <laughs> if that's what you want to call it, right? Or going through it at the time. But uh, after Margaret had been working with uh, Peter the dolphin for a bit, she approached Dr. Lily about the idea of, and I, you know, maybe she was just looking for a free place to stay, but uh, she approached Dr. Lily with the idea of living full time at the dolphinarium and converting the entire place into like a dolphin friendly atmosphere. Because at at this point in time, they just had the pool. Uh, on the coast, right? Where the dolphins hung out. Right. But she, this untrained 22 year old college dropout, convinced Dr. Lily to completely convert the dolphinarium into a dolphin friendly environment. And what <laughs> I mean by that is completely flooding the place so that the entire first and second floor of this building are, are basically pools. Going so far as to make the the balcony overlooking the coast into a pool, which I thought was nuts. <laughs> the whole thing is but, nuts. Yeah. Well, yeah. And and I mean, they had an elevator for the dolphin to get on and, yeah. and come up to the second floor. And like she had a desk suspended from the ceiling over top of the pool. And, you know, it was just it was completely flooded for uh, the use of the dolphin. And uh, again, she was focusing on Frank. The other two dolphins stayed down in the main Peter. Pool. Oh, did I say Frank? Peter, sorry. Uh, again, this was just for Peter. Uh, the other two dolphins, the two females, stayed down in the main pool. 
where uh uh what's his name bateson and his wife were focusing on them right still trying to figure out how they communicate with each other like good scientists and yes yeah but yeah so margaret started living with uh frank peter why are you so, calling him fucking frank <laughs> So Margaret started living with uh, Peter, the dolphin, full time, seven days a week. Yeah, they would and sleep next to each other. Yeah, no, it's the whole thing is nuts. the 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 amount of responsibility, I mean, because this is like a, a NASA funded research right. program, right? I mean, then. that is a time. Just. 22-year-olds today can't even get entry-level positions with bachelor degrees. <laughs> this woman had nothing, and she was able to somehow weasel her way into having a scientist who was funded by NASA flood a research facility so she can live with a dolphin for 20, like, full-time, 24-7. <laughs> That's insane. Yeah. That is absolutely is. insane. Just because, and remember, this all started out because she kind of liked dolphins. Yeah, because she, <laughs> I heard you had <laughs> dolphins. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't know when Lily started dropping the LSD, but, you know, it might have been around this time. <laughs> my, I mean, I, I mean, <laughs> I have to, you have to give, you have to give it to her because, I mean, that's ballsy. <laughs> it is. It's really ballsy. I wonder though, at if any point in time she she thought like, oh, they'll never go for this. This is a crazy request, or right, if she yeah. was so like full of herself. Yeah, that she like, was like, I don't know. For you to <laughs> to drum up the courage to ask legitimate scientists to flood their research facility <laughs> so she could live there. Yeah, it's it is, <laughs> and you know what the funny part is. What's after that? all of this, after everything, all all this stuff happens, very end, she still fucking lived there. <laughs> she lived there like ten years later. That's that's true, yeah. <laughs> so did I they just she was give a squatter, it, really. Did they just give it to her? <laughs> no, I I have no idea how that works. There's so many unanswered questions right now. <laughs> I'm sure the answers are out there somewhere, but oh I my god, across did you buy the place where they like whatever you were fucking insane? Do you deal <laughs> just, with this? Just take it, yeah. Although now I should say the Dolphinarium is just completely oh, it's it's just it's trash. It's ruins, yeah. yeah. I mean, it's still there, but it's not. Yeah, it's in it's any a sort show. Of state, yeah. Oh. But uh, Bateson, of course, didn't agree with any of this. Uh, he didn't like the approach. And he wanted nothing to do with it, and he just focused on the other two dolphins and observing them and learning how they communicate. And this is where I think that the tension comes in, because they were very, you know, it was obvious in the documentary that they thought uh, Margaret was uh, kind of silly, <laughs> had the same opinion of her as you do. Yeah. You know, and I think there's some of that, you know, maybe the wife. Bateson's wife was kind of jealous of her youthful attractiveness, you know, Maybe. and stuff like that. I don't like. I got. I got that sense when I was watching it. Of course, I can't. I don't have anything to back this up, right? But and I imagine the professional aspect was the main issue with them. Uh, this untrained person <laughs> being <laughs> given this Definitely. free reign for research, well, you know? Yeah, I would be but, insulted. <laughs> but we have. We actually have some audio of the work that Margaret was doing with Frank. Today is August 18. This is the morning lesson with Peter. Hello. Hello. Clearly, Peter. What's on the Come on. Oh wow, what a riveting clip. <laughs> uh yeah. Um I should just I should have just played the 
just the plain samples of the dolphin of uh, well i, <laughs> I was of, thinking we should have played a game as in you um you isolate a sample and i try to guess what he's what they're saying <laughs> that would have been a good idea see you should come to me with this stuff beforehand <laughs> well, unless you actually just thought of it now i just thought of it and okay. i mean i i watched the documentary less than two hours ago oh so. <laughs> okay well that would uh kind of ruin it then but that was next time next time we have a talking dolphin uh, yeah. episode we'll uh oh we'll for sure that. yeah but no i mean like you said earlier uh it it was a circus trick and like yeah. like a parrot you yeah, know? yeah. It's, it's just it's just basic mimicry yeah so, uh, uh anyway the research continued on and carl sagan who's much better than Neil deGrasse Tyson actually Whoa. paid <laughs> paid the laboratory a visit uh, to check because he's working for NASA. Then what did you have something to say or me? Yeah, no, no. not at all. Okay, all right. <laughs> because he was a, a, a scientist at NASA. <laughs> I mean, some other time. people might have something to say, but uh, I made my my statement. Yeah, I you sure mine. did. <laughs> Uh, and he found the research interesting, but kind of felt that it might be a waste of time. Oh, I mean, and that's and, Carl Sagan <laughs> being fucking nice. Yeah, he, he's just being polite. Because uh, he was a very polite man. Yeah, and and he he kind of oh yeah no he I don't you know I don't know much about him but I can't picture him like flying off the handle, <laughs> and throwing a chair across the room. He was a raging yeah. jerk. <laughs> Yeah, but he uh, he kind of hinted, I think, to the rest of the uh, the backers of this project that maybe they should be focusing more on learning how dolphins communicate. Yeah. Uh, but Lily disagreed, and he told Margaret to keep going with what she was yeah. doing. So this is Lily's know. in the LSD, right? By this time, at this point, uh, maybe. I think so. I want to say he was like he was, he was doing this it on where himself. He was, yeah, he was starting to. He was hanging out in like San Francisco and yeah, yeah. He was friends with Allen Ginsberg for fuck's sake. <laughs> so you know, yeah. and Timothy Leary and Jeff Bridges. And, uh, Jeff Bridges apparently was in there too, <laughs> but but they were all you know. This was the 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 nucleus of this this LSD movement that was happening on mainland USA that uh, kind of took off and changed Lily forever. And he got himself a coonskin hat <laughs> for some reason. That's going to be the picture of uh, our episode. <laughs> that should be. I was thinking like a dolphin or something. You know those like fantasy dolphin <laughs> posters that used to... I was thinking that. The I wanna, now I'm thinking... The I want to die meme. <laughs> that one. Oh, that's kind of sad. Oh, that, that, uh, oh, maybe we do have to use that. That fits how perfectly this for this. That's yeah. really... Uh, uh, wow. Wow. This, <laughs> this, here, this whole cheerful act is just a, a show because... Yeah, this gets really <laughs> fucked up. Yeah. But... <laughs> We're, yeah, when when Lily instructed Margaret to continue with the research, really we're dealing with the beginning of the end of this program and getting into the stuff that uh, that makes us uh, part of the the not safe work history uh, thing. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think at this point in time, Lily is balls deep into the LSD thing. That's uh, that's going on in mainland. So at this point. It's safe to say that this dolphinarium is up on the back burner of his mind. He's not really <laughs> focusing on that very much. Right. Uh, it's around the same time, too, that Frank's... Did I say Frank again? Yeah, you wrote it as I, Frank. Why did I write it so many times as Frank? Jesus Christ, hold on. <laughs> it was also... A find and replace all for Frank oh, and change it to Peter. Go. It was also around this time... Uh, that Peter's sexual urges started to emerge. And this is where things get a little dirty. And that Margaret just kind of uh, let him take it out on her. Yeah. Well, uh, she explained it as 
at first when he would get these urges, she would put him in the elevator to well go back. To actually, the main no, there's tank. there's a bit before that is that she'd let him rub his penis. I'm guessing it didn't go into explicit detail, but yeah, on her, on her right, head yeah, or d- yeah. But if he got too rough, yeah, and then th- then she would send him down to the the two females, which I found. I don't know if you caught this, but I found it kind of disturbing because. Uh, you get all this talk now about, now we're coming at this from two different angles. So bear with me. You get the animal rights people, right? Yeah. Who say that animals should be treated humanely and stuff like that, which I agree with to a certain extent. PETA, I think takes it a little bit too far, but, and then you've got the rape culture people going on. Aren't you basically sending that dolphin down to rape the other two dolphins? (laughs) I mean, isn't, isn't that what's going on? I, I don't know if they're, if, I don't know. Maybe they allowed him to do it. I don't. Maybe I. Him. I just think, it, like uh, you know, oh, his sexual urges are getting too violent. I better set him loose on these two female dolphins downstairs. I don't know. I had that thought that kind of skeeved me out a little bit. But uh, I, I but did. that's no. Okay. I oh, I, yeah. Yeah, maybe. maybe that's just my fucked up brain. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. But I don't. I like I said. I think in the last episode, I can't keep up with all this PC, you know, cultural foible kind of stuff. I don't know. I don't I, think I have... it counts when it's animals. Probably not, but there's somebody out there that, that thinks it does. No, I, well, I mean, I have seen a, a video of a dolphin have sex with a dead fish. <laughs> I think I've seen that before, too. <laughs> yeah, so. They're horny bastards. They are. They are. Out there. Yeah, but they have a good time. They're magical creatures. Yeah. Who rape dead fish. <laughs> and but anyway. They'll rape you. If oh, yeah. Yeah, without a second thought. Yeah. They're but, monsters, uh, really. <laughs> yeah, and, and they also kill for fun, too. Did you know that? Yeah, they'll, like, just drown motherfuckers. Yeah. They just, they enjoy doing it. But, uh, no, it's when he got a little bit too antsy. They'd send him down to the other two female dolphins, which Margaret felt disrupted the research because as his quote, sexual urges research. became more frequent, well, research, quote, unquote, uh, as the sexual urges became more frequent, it was real. Like, I get the sense that it was kind of a pain in the ass to put him in this elevator and right. take him down to the pool, you know. Uh, they did show a brief clip of it on the, uh, on the documentary. And it it didn't look like anything I'd want to deal with on a regular basis. Yeah. Well, so, I don't know how horny. Like, how often do they have these urges? Uh, I I think it'd be similar to a thirteen year old male. So you know, all the time. Know, all the time. Yeah. That's <laughs> because well. So it, yeah. So it's probably all the time, but it just gets really bad sometimes. Yeah. 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 Like. Almost unmanageable, I guess. Right. Like, I don't know. It's been a long time for me. <laughs> yeah, so. I don't know. But, <laughs> but this is when Margaret decided to take care of it on her own. Yeah. And now, years later, in the mid to late 70s, I think it was, I looked for the article. I could not find it. I wish I did. They did have a copy of the Hustler magazine this article was in on eBay. <laughs> but, or was it eBay? It might have been something else. It might have even been Amazon, of all things. But And I, I considered buying it, but decided it wasn't worth it for just one article. You should have just but you, contacted the guy. Hey, can you take a picture of the <laughs> article about the lady having sex with a dolphin? <laughs> yeah. But, well, the, the this was years later. This is the first kind of public outing of the program. It was, it was this uh, article in Hustler Magazine which claimed that she actually had sex with the dolphin. Right, and this is where the sensationalism comes in. Yeah, because I looked into it, and that shit ain't happening. Yeah. Because no way. a dolphin, a male dolphin, shoots semen 15 meters through water. <laughs> <laughs> so that shit's doing some damage if it's inside a chick. Yeah. Or a guy, too. You know, I'm not one to discriminate, but <laughs> it's not going to go well for the human. 
no. on the other end of that. Because 15 meters through water, that's that's some that's some velocity that you're dealing with there. <laughs> so even if the other physical aspects of it can hook up, you know, you still got to deal with that yeah. unpleasantness at the end of it. So I, I don't care how into dolphin sex you are, you're not going to be dealing with that sort of uh, uh, thing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know. But no, I th- what and they kind of alluded to this in a lot of the stuff I read. But she gave him handies basically. Yeah, whenever he was feeling uh, antsy, she gave him a handy to calm him down, and then he got back to research. Now, before I watched the documentary, I thought to myself when reading this stuff that oh, she loved it. You know, that was her kink. You know, <laughs> that was what she was into. She so she got pretty... off on that, <laughs> but. After watching the documentary and seeing her talk about it, I'm not so sure anymore. No, I think she thought she was doing something important. Yeah. Yeah, and it, this was, uh, she, she'd give him the old hand relief to, to be able to get back to the To research. continue, yeah. And she said, how did she put it? She said that it wasn't sexual. She said it was sensual. It was sensual, yeah. yeah. So, what the, I well, mean, which is still kind of creepy. It, it is, yeah. I don't know. Do you want your mother giving you a sensual massage? <laughs> you know, like that's yeah. So uh, it is kind of it's still a weird way to put it, but yeah. Now you've got <laughs> now you've got that image in your head. I apologize, yeah. but uh, so I don't know. It's there could have been some kinky sort of when you're in that frame of mind, right? You know, and she knew what she was doing. I always thought that the people that collect semen from farm farm animals might get off on it a little bit too, but <laughs> I see just... I see it as those people having a very inconvenient thing to do at the time. <laughs> yeah, that, that, yeah. Uh... I mean, because really, no one wants to do that. No, I know, but I think you know how like you yeah. think just like the fact that it's so taboo that it kind of makes you horny at the time. Maybe I don't. Well, I think like I I remember reading somewhere that uh, necrophilia is very big in the uh, uh, the funeral home world. You know. Oh yeah. Oh like, no. I get that. Like I get people who want to do that. You. Well, yeah. So if you have some sort of case. if you have some sort of fucked up fetish, right. Maybe you'd pursue a line of work where you're dealing with that on a professional level. That's a really good point. To be able to legitimize it. I don't know. I take it back. Anyone who (laughs) has to stimulate the prostate of a bull does it for sexual purposes. (laughs) Every single person that does it. Yep. I'm not saying that. I'm saying that maybe (laughs) if somebody was into that, they'd pursue that as a line of work. Oh, for sure. Yeah, for sure. Then like, I don't know that open. What are you then gynecologists? What are they all about? You know, yeah. I don't know. Uh, I think if you have to go through like ten years of university to get to that point, it's it's right. Not, you're not That's, you're not doing it for the sexual fetish. No, of definitely it. not. <laughs> I, and I mean, you can't you can't pick your your patients. That's you know true. I mean? too. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. No, I know. So there's some bulls and that it, are more it, attractive than it, other bulls. Yeah. Is that what you're saying? Oh uh, well. Oh, maybe to... not in that. I was talking in the line of gynecology. I know, I know. That was my attempt at a oh, joke. I know. I, it Didn't was an attempt. Point. Okay. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> uh, so, I don't know if this is what kind of really turned the tail. See, because, okay, so, Margaret jerking off Peter was happening at the same time. Lily was back in San Francisco dropping LSD. So I don't know which of the two, if it was a combination of the two, that that started, uh, you know, people asking questions about the validity of this research. Well, I, know, I, don't, I don't think I don't think many people were asking questions about um, her. No. Okay. Well, well see, I, I, I think... mean the research, not necessarily her jerking off a dolphin. Yeah. Oh, that was, it's part of the, yeah, okay. Yeah, it's it's just like, well, this is just a stupid experiment. <laughs> yeah, well, uh, uh, I don't know. Gregory Bateson and his wife really started to question the research. And I got to think, 
because here's the thing too with with her it's not just her giving hand jobs to uh to Peter but it's it's the relationship that she developed with Peter and she says at one point in time in the documentary she couldn't even call him a dolphin right because they had grown so close so i think it's that overall closest the, the bond that they developed together that kind of made uh, Bateson start really questioning the validity of the research. Yeah. Because she, oh, this reminds, so she, this whole time when I was watching this documentary, I didn't think once of her relationship or like her and and her um, sexually releasing the dolphin Mm -hmm. as disturbing until she mentioned that, her research was like being a mother and raising a child and how if she would have oh, kept on with right that. Too. So like that made me, I was just like, ew, that's kind of gross. As in it's, like her yeah. whole, the, how she described her re- relationship with Peter uh, in combination with the sexual acts. I got to call them sexual acts because they still are. Well, I mean, they know. are. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's weird. It's it is weird, and I feel bad because she seems like a lovely person in the interview. She does, it's just I don't yeah. know. There's something about the whole thing, and we're not prudish either. I mean, we yeah. wouldn't be doing this fucking podcast if we were <laughs> prudes. But just you know, I had it was a, odd when when she equated it to a mother raising a child. I was just yeah. like, uh, what? You there was a group that of people dolphins. that raised. There was a people, a group of people that raised their children like that, but they were a fucking cult. Yeah, and they went so. to jail or died. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I don't know. The whole thing is kind of <sighs> there's human psychology is a complicated thing, and there's a lot of things going on in, in behind the scenes. I guess you could say. I think in the story. Yeah. That we're just not privy to, and it would take a shrink to really dig it out, I think. <laughs> but anyway, at the same time, Bateson was qu- questioning the validity of this research. So was NASA. And I think that might have more to do with uh, Lily uh, just being a space cadet. By yeah, he was, he was fucking <laughs> gone. And uh, them suggesting to him that he should focus research in one way and him just kind of ignoring that and telling Margaret to keep doing what she's doing. Yeah. I think what ended up happening is the backers, they they said, you know, you've got to, we've got to see some results soon or we're going to have to shut this thing down. So Lily with his newfound, uh, happy fun time drug decided that, uh, the best way to get results would be to inject the dolphins with LSD. To try to uh, yeah. coax some sort of uh, you know result from them. Yeah. He fucking MK at Ultra these <laughs> motherfucking dolphins. dolphins. <laughs> but well and and Margaret had that's I think that's the first time they really came into conflict, Lily right. and Margaret. Because again, the balls on this woman. She's yeah, not she a thinks scientist. she's like some kind of like legitimate scientist. <laughs> yeah. She's like, I will not stand for you giving Peter L S D it's it's yeah all and, i've worked for but he agreed too yeah that's, right that's well it's just like, like he, just shut up give me the other two it doesn't matter just give me a fucking dolphin and i i i want to know where where the batesons were when this was going down because oh they ended they, up injecting the two female dolphins with lsd well this is what happened um when lily came up with this idea the Batesons and said absolutely not and he fuck said, that? Well, fuck that. And they're like, all right, oh, we're they gone. Left. I missed yeah, that part. This is when they left. Okay. Uh, so Margaret ended up helping uh, Lily with the injecting the dolphins with LSD. Two cubic centimeters. That's a lot. Of LSD. Yeah. That's a lot. That's a lot. But the thing with uh, pharmaceuticals is that they don't affect... Uh, animals the same way they affect humans in most cases. Yeah. And that's why, I mean, there are some mammals that you can use to do testing on, on pharmaceuticals, like rats and stuff like that. Right. But uh, not all animals react the same way. 
to uh, to drugs, and uh, the dolphins didn't react at all. Yeah, they just kept swimming around happily. He, yeah. Well, I don't know about happily. They just got injected with shit, you know, right. with a big needle. So they probably didn't L- like that. <laughs> Lily went as far as taking a jackhammer <laughs> and using a jackhammer to fucking make these loud ass uh, noises because I through the tank, yeah, yeah, because I guess dolphins have like super sonic hearing for like finding shit. So he's like running this fucking jackhammer trying to <laughs> induce like some kind of experience with these dolphins and nothing happened. Nothing happens. So, and <laughs> like, well, because he's such a, you know, acid head now, after he found out that LSD had no effect on the dolphins, he just kind of abandoned the project. Yeah. He's like, Oh, I'm done here. Fuck this shit. You know, this guy, he was a really, he's a, He's a pretty big piece of shit. <laughs> He's, but he was, and it's it's kind of it's kind of a sad thing because he was a really well respected scientist, right? When this whole thing started, and it just it. Uh, now I'm not I'm not saying I'm it, 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 this isn't an anti drug thing or you know right. Well, uh, he became like this pseudoscience, new medicine kind of guy. Yeah, yeah, and so you could kind of say that. It destroyed a brilliant mind, maybe, which yeah. has been known to happen with drugs like LSD. Um, although he gained a friend of Jeff with Jeff, Jeff Bridges. Bridges. I, mean, <laughs> I, mean, I mean, that's kind of cool. Yeah, that's, you know. Uh, I like Jeff Bridges. He's a cool guy. Oh, he's a great guy. Yeah. But uh, when we're actually, when we're recording this episode, uh, a peek behind the curtain again. Uh, but... Uh, Jeff Bridges just showed up at uh, John Goodman's uh, Walk of Fame. Oh, Hollywood star thing. Yeah. Yeah, and, as the dude. As the dude. So that was kind of cool to see. Yeah, that was cool. So so we're what? Only like three or four weeks, maybe more, but yeah. <laughs> when this when this episode is, <laughs> is being released. But, you know, that's something that just happened. And again, we always try, we always say we're not going to talk about current events when we get on here, but. But that's a good current event. <laughs> yeah, the dude. I mean, come on. John Goodman. Oh, he's yeah. a good man. Yeah, he is. It's right in his name. I'm pretty sure he says that. <laughs> uh, that's kind of sad if he does. No, no, the dude says it. Oh, does he? Oh, yeah. He's, like, oh, okay. <laughs> well, oh, Jeff dude. Bridges asked the dude. Anyway, yeah. Lily and uh, Jeff Bridges. And <laughs> the reason we know that Jeff Bridges is such good friends is with or was such good friends with <laughs> Lily is because he randomly shows up in this fucking, in this documentary. fucking documentary. I I, <laughs> I start watching this documentary and this guy who looks like Jeff Bridges comes on screen and he starts talking about the Lily. Fucking, yeah, <laughs> and I'm like, wow, this guy looks and sounds like Jeff Bridges. And then up up comes the uh, the fucking name Jeff Bridges. Like I was just like, <laughs> what is he doing in this documentary? Yeah, it was a weird one, but hey. Yeah, I mean that's that's perfect, Jeff Bridges, right there. <laughs> he would just show up in a fucking documentary. Yep, random ass documentary. <laughs> but anyway, yeah. So Lily abandoned the project, and uh, the whole thing was shut down. And this is where things get a little sad. Yeah. <clears throat> yep. Um. Of course, Margaret had grown really attached to Peter, and Peter really attached to Margaret. Uh, but the dolphins couldn't stay there. They had to be shipped because they were research dolphins, right? Yeah. So you, you can't, they couldn't just release them back in the law. They could, but you know. The, oh, they know, wouldn't survive. Yeah. Oh, you don't I think mean, so? Yeah, probably No, they, I mean, they've been hand-fed fish their entire life. Oh, that's true because they were Hollywood dolphins before that. Yeah. So uh, they were transported to a research facility in the mainland. Yeah. Uh, and I guess this place was a pretty nasty Hell place on Earth. for dolphins, anyway. Yeah, but it was one of the you know the shallow tanks and in a warehouse kind of thing, and no natural lighting in the entire <clears throat> that, thing. It was yeah, like a the dark whole thing. Is kind of I'm I'm not an animal rights person by any stretch of the imagination, but you know there's certain uh, amounts there, of if when it comes to stuff like this, it you need to 
make sure that the animals are treated properly. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And I mean, <laughs> this is this is the part where I was like, okay, Lily's a piece of shit. Yeah. Like this guy is a fucking asshole. Well, did he? Was that his facility as well? Yeah. They, it was, his. It was, okay. It was so they part were his, of his dolphins. Well, yeah. That's it. Was, there, everything was his. Yeah. Well, yeah, this was uh, his research facility in Florida, wasn't it? Yeah, I think, I think it was in Miami. Miami, yeah. But uh, uh, they were trans- transferred to this uh, Miami facility. And a couple weeks later, Peter actually committed suicide. Uh, presumably because he couldn't, well, he couldn't understand, really, right uh, the separation. Because he'd been living with this woman for six months and you know straight like no grew uh, yeah this was I mean, you know they were together all the time yeah and uh where margaret could, would, could kind of rationalize it but peter was unable to and and yeah it's uh i don't know committed suicide well no i you know what i think it, I agree it was with it that. was an ad- it was a deliberate attempt to kill himself yeah because i guess what dolphins will do when they're too stressed out is uh, they just take a breath and they sink to the bottom. Because right. how it was explained is that, well, dolphins have to, they have to consciously take a breath. You know, it's not an automatic thing like for us. They actually have to, you know, think about it yeah. and swim up to the surface and take a breath. But yeah, he just took a breath and sank to the bottom of the tank and didn't come up for air. Uh, so. Really sad. Yeah, it, that's kind of a... They didn't say what happened to the other two. No, but they they were... I mean, they were at the same place. Yeah, but I think they were treated like dolphins <laughs> rather than children, you know? Yeah. I mean, I mean it, was it was still probably still, a nightmare for it them. It still sucked for them, yeah. you know? But uh, no, they didn't, they didn't mention anything about that. But uh, anyway, but yeah, Margaret continued to live at this place. For 10 I, I don't... That's, that was a part where I was like... Uh, did they just say, "Yeah, do whatever you want. We don't care"? Or like, you know what? Did I she think because Lily, I think because Lily was so messed up, he probably just kind of left. Like, you know how you know how when like you move to a new place and the previous owners forgot to disconnect the cable, and you get free cable. <laughs> free cable. Just, I think it's kind of like that sort of situation. I mean, everything was paid for. So. Well, yeah, she was probably sitting around waiting to be kicked out. That's and true. it just never happened, right? Because Lily yeah. was fucked out of his head on uh, LSD, so she just she just yeah. kind of squatted there for you know ten, ten years. years. Yeah, she raised a family with her husband. Yeah. Now I wonder if they kept it flooded. <laughs> I was just thinking that that'd be kind of a cool house to live in. It'd get oh old my God. quickly, though. I think. And here's where I jerked off the dolphin. <laughs> Do you suppose that was a point of pride for her? I don't know. Uh, I don't think so. I think it was just a chore. Yeah. A creepy chore. Yeah. Well, unless you're into that sort of thing, then you, you can make any, any sort of, uh, you know, inference you want on that. As, as Hustler did in the 1970s. Yeah, they really fucking... <laughs> they goosed. I guess she, uh, she ran around trying to buy up as many copies as she could. Really, I would have just I would have just sued him. I mean, it's I don't obviously know. fake. I don't know if they used the real names though. No, they did. They used her. Oh, exact they used name. her name. I yeah. wonder why she didn't then. I would, that would have been fucking yeah. easy street. Yeah, but unless unless a listener out there can prove us wrong, I think it's it's nigh on impossible to actually have intercourse with a dolphin as yeah. a woman. <laughs> I think it would uh, be pretty goddamn painful. Yeah, that's, please don't that's send us any proof. No, either. actually, yeah, I shouldn't have said that. Well, now you know what's going to happen. <laughs> I think but, we'll be all right. All right. <laughs> anyway, yeah. So the hustler article was that's that was kind of the first time it was brought to the public attention is uh, through hustler. So and this documentary was which was just made a few years ago is the first time. Uh, any of the people involved in the project uh, talked publicly about it. Yeah. So I don't think it was like a top secret research thing. It's just, I think, you know, nobody really talked about it after the fact because it was such a tremendous failure. 
Well, yeah, the I think the the Batesons continued their work like yeah. way years oh, yeah, yeah. for the rest of their life. So yeah. this was just the drop in the bucket for that. Yeah, this was just one of the many stops on their on their travels yeah. kind of thing. But uh and then Lily, well, Lily bought a coonskin cap. Yeah, he bought well, he also had like this revelation and um actually it was probably remorse for how he treated his fucking animals yeah, because I was, yeah he he came out and he he would um fight for releasing or um not releasing but he would he would he would fight for um more or less marine life rights you know mm. so i and, mean well I, I think i think he he made some sort of you know, reference to the dolphins and stuff like that in a TV interview that he gave, right uh, in the eighties about uh, yeah how they he was he, be treated that way yeah yeah he was very much uh, let them free yeah. study them in their natural habitat which is the right tank. way to do it yeah absolutely yeah it but, sucks that he had to learn that after he put all these animals through yeah. so much torment so but. what's the What's the final analysis of Margaret? I think we've covered it, but um, I think she meant well, but she was in yeah. over her head. I I thought she. I think that she thought she was an artist, or she was an artist. She was a delusional scientist. Yeah, I mean, think about twenty-two year olds, and I apologize to any early twenty-year-olds yeah. listening right now. But you don't know it. I, I remember. I remember when I was that age. And yeah, you don't know anything. You and think even you then, know everything, and you don't know anything. But well, of course, I think that continues on through life now. Like, oh yeah, like I'm 34, and I think I've right. got a pretty good handle of things. I imagine in another <laughs> 10 years, I'm gonna be like, oh, I was such an idiot at 34. What the fuck, you know? I think it's just a fact of life that, that continues. Yeah. But at 22, you really don't know anything, <laughs> especially in the dark. Yeah. yeah. Um, an overabundance of uh, confidence, I guess you could call it. Yeah. And an extreme love for dolphins. Yeah. But she was attractive. We'll give her that. And I think she was a fairly smart lady, too. I mean, she didn't look, she didn't seem like a dope in her interviews. No, so, she seemed like smart a normal enough. person. Yeah. Uh, except for good at circus jerk. tricks, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. But uh, now, do you know if she continued to work? with the marine mammals after that or <laughs> I don't think so. It's I couldn't find anything that talked about uh what she did after that project. The only thing that they mentioned was she lived in the research facility. <laughs> so well, I years. guess if you're living rent free, you know, you can and maybe she, she raised a family and got married, so maybe she became a masseuse. Yeah. You know? Happy ending. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Experience, you know? Anyway, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> Where can people find us? You can find us at our website and at not safe for work history podcast.com. Uh, it's NSFW History Podcast. You can follow us on Twitter at NSFW History. Mm-hmm. Uh, you can search for us on Facebook at uh, Not Safe for Work History Podcast. Fucking Facebook. Hey. Yep. I don't know. Uh, (laughs) (laughs) And um, you can subscribe to us on iTunes and Google Play. Just search for us, Not Safe for Work History Podcast. That's a lot of stuff. Yep. We're all over the web. Yeah. but And I guess we should uh, mention, too, that we're going to be adding uh, another... Thing to our repertoire here. Is that the right way to say it? I don't even know. Right now we're releasing every two weeks and we feel kind of like, or at least I feel like that seems a little cheap. Is that the way you would say it? <laughs> I don't know. It's just two weeks is a long time. I, there's lots of podcasts I listen to and there's one in particular that I'm thinking of right now that is every two weeks. And it just seems like too long in between episodes, you know? So we've decided that we're yeah. going to add what we're calling the quickie and the off weeks, which will be shorter episodes, uh, where we'll deal with um, things like uh, 
current uh, archaeological news in the not safe work realm. Uh, listener mail, comments, suggestions, uh, criticism, corrections. <laughs> we'll, probably be doing, we'll, we'll probably be doing a lot of corrections. Uh, <laughs> I know I mentioned uh, a couple episodes ago. Uh, who, what did I say? Ragnar the Boneless? Yeah, yeah. It's actually Ivar the Boneless. We know. We know. Yeah, we're just making sure that you know. <laughs> it's a test. It's all planned. But yeah, so we'll, we'll start doing that. I think what? It'll be about a half an hour long, maybe. Yeah. I think we should expand that to topics. Not safe for work history topics that, that are not necessarily new or uh, in the news, but topics that um, can't be... That there, it's just not enough subject matter for a whole hour. Yeah, and one of the other ideas too was uh, taking current events and finding uh, similar happenings in in the past. Yeah, uh, when that kind of stuff pops up. Uh, one of my one of my favorite things to to see, I guess. Well, yeah, one of my favorite things is when people bitch about current celebrities and kind of complain that it's a sign of our times and you know there, there's, there's almost always an example from somewhere in history of the same thing happening or the same type of celebrity existing you know the famous for being being famous people yeah that people oh, like, like the stupid one you want to do what you mention earlier oh jessica <laughs> Hahn. well yeah. she's kind of one of them but no but you know like uh people bitch bitch about the kardashians and stuff like that yeah they're just famous for being famous uh, that shit has existed for a long time too, you know. Uh, so maybe we'll kind of explore ideas like that uh, in these quickies. But uh, but yeah, it's just uh, if you like listening to us and you can tolerate us rambling on, then you'll have <laughs> some more of that going on. And if not, then I, why have you listened to this entire episode? Anyway, what are we going to leave off with? I think. I, I think. Know. The theme song to flip over would be a good one for this. Uh, have a good one. Alright, see ya. Clever, lived in a world full of wonder, lying there.